think one thing that sometimes can happen, uh, whether you're from India or China or any other country, is that uh, sometimes your accent, if you don't have the right accent, it can be confused with fluency. So if you don't sound like the way you think you should or the other person expects you to, they might confuse it with it's not fluent. So those are two different things that I think people in general sometimes can confuse. Uh, if it's not the accent they're used to uh, in their ears, they can kind of confuse whether the person is fluent or not. So, you know, on that point, I just want to say to anyone who's new in the country um, or, or has been there for a while, if you have an accent that isn't American or isn't in the, isn't what, whether you're in other in any different country or UK or wherever, don't ever feel bad that you have an accent. Um, so it isn't uh, if whether it's you know if if your accent is an American or British or Australian, I'm sure people from that country don't feel insecure for having an accent, but we do because it doesn't it's not what we see in movies. So uh, you know never feel bad that you have one as long as you are communicating, uh, you're you're good. Uh, then that's how don't don't feel insecure about it. The only thing is, if you have a very thick accent, sometimes it's difficult for the other person to understand. And it's kind of very a genuine concern. So try to as long as you're communicating and you're softening your accent a little bit, just so that the communication happens smoothly, um, just up to that. Other than that, I think, you know, never, never feel kind of bad about just having an accent. Nothing to feel bad about. Yeah, I definitely agree. There's this category of fancy accent and not so fancy accent, right? <laughs> um, there is that bias um, uh, mixing, you know, fluency with accents, especially when you have a not so fancy accent. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, so I definitely see um, people who have perfect accents, uh, but they are not good uh, communicators. So I think the key is really to focus on, on that effective communication. You know, in the corporate world, it's, it really means that um, you know your audience and uh, you, know, you have ex ac active uh, listening and uh, make sure you're precise and concise when you convey your uh, points. Um, so it definitely uh, takes a long time to develop your own um, communication style. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, totally agree with that. I think the next topic that we want to dive into is the importance of representation um, and, you know, when you have it and when you don't have it. So what's the benefit and, you know, what impact it might have on somebody um, to share my journey. For me, I think I was very lucky to have found my first female mentor at 25. Um, you know, I was two years in the company and um, said I was certainly I was in a team in which uh, two of my bosses or like people above me left the company or reorgs happened and I was suddenly reported to somebody really high up who had a great reputation in the com in the company like I knew as soon as I joined that oh I want to work for this person one day and suddenly I was reporting to her uh, you know two years later so it was a big deal for me and uh, I knew right there and then that uh, I want to be like her. I want to have the expertise that she has. I want to have the respect that she has, you know, earned over over the years. So I really, really looked up to her, and I think she also kind of took me as a mentee, uh, seeing whether seeing my admiration for her or my sincerity and my hard work. But uh, you know, she taught me a lot of things, and I that I think really affected um, how I viewed myself as a professional, just um, or how I wanted to be like when I grow older. Um, and later on in my career, when I was in Torrential, uh, there was a point in which my boss was Chinese, her boss was Chinese, uh, all of them women, um, and then her boss was an Indian woman. So for them or for anybody else, it may not be that big of a deal, but me that being in the conference room, hearing those voices, or those different kind of seeing those different faces, those color, like the, you know, sorry, seeing those different faces and uh, that representation had a huge impact on me because um, it was not about if I can do it, 
it became about when I'm going to do it, when I'm going to become like where they are. So I think representation personally for me um, had a huge, huge impact. But I do want to say that, uh, you know, it it doesn't mean that that, that the lack of representation in terms of women uh, is still there. They were still the only women in the conference room. Th that, uh, you know, one person out of 10, um, it was, is, that thing was still there, but I still had somebody uh, to look up to uh, very early on when I was very young. Um, but, but I want to hear about you, wrong. How was, was it back then? <laughs> yeah, you are so lucky, right? You had not only one, but multiple, um, uh, role models uh, from similar cultural backgrounds. That's really rare. <laughs> so yeah, so when I first entered the profession in early 2000s, um, there weren't uh, so many Asian actuaries, uh, not to mention Asian women actuaries. Uh, so as I move up the corporate ladder, I see even fewer uh, women actuaries. Um, as you said, I'm often the only woman actuary in the room or women in the room. <laughs> so um, I wasn't as lucky as you are, uh, but I did work for, uh, you know, in terms of cultural um, uh, leadership, I, I wasn't as lucky, but uh, I did have a couple of female uh, chief actuaries I work with. Um, they are really, um, they showed me, uh, you know, they can be both nice and uh, tough at the same time. Um, also, you know, in this world, uh, mostly uh, occupied by, you know, uh, white male in the upper echelon of leadership. I see that, uh, you know, there's a lot of advantage uh, uh, with uh, women leadership because women are just naturally uh, very um, collaborative, uh, easygoing, flexible, and uh, value teamwork. So uh, those are some of the things I, I saw about um, the strength of women leadership. Absolutely, absolutely. I just, uh, you know, suddenly remembered as you were saying uh, about the first boss that I mentioned, uh, not first boss, my first, like my, my first mentor that I mentioned, uh, she, uh, she's uh, Asian and, you know, now retired. And I remember uh, it was one of my first months and I was kind of telling her that, you know, are people biased here? Are people sexist here? Because I was suddenly uh, entering rooms that had a lot of men and I was very young. So I didn't know, you know, how it was like. And, you know, the only thing she said was that, uh, you know, Mahima, first of all, stop thinking has like stop thinking that you are woman and there will be you know a lot of bias or sexism there might be there might not be but you're already going in the room assuming and expecting oh my god there's so much internal so she made me realize my about my own internal bias i'm already insecure about being a woman so uh, I, the world uh, is we know how the world is there is sexism there is bias in everyone minds we uh, and it is slowly going to change and unfortunately very slowly is changing but her point was that first of all you have to remove your internal bias and that goes back to kind of the first question but she was the first person who kind of made me open my eyes and she's much older um and so she was like you have to remove your self-doubt before you expect the other person uh to do it so you know that was a huge learning that is kind of uh, imprinted in my brain um and you know that's why i think the importance of having role models um and you know what how much impact they can have on you regardless of age i think the younger maybe you know when you're younger it's it's more uh, you're more open uh, to uh, all these things you're more impressionable at the time um but even if they if you if you don't uh, find sorry if, uh, even if you don't find a role model that doesn't look like you uh, or doesn't sound like you um uh, but have similar backgrounds or at least understands where you're coming from. If, you have, if it's a male uh, mentor, but they understand where you're coming from, they understand the difficulties you may had, so they empathize with it and they can still help you a lot. So it doesn't matter or it shouldn't be that you didn't find the perfect mentor and you wouldn't be able to grow, you wouldn't be able to learn, you still can. So, you know, learn from everybody you can and anybody who's trying to help you uh, you you try to grab that opportunity and try to find good mentors, regardless of whether they're women or Asian or, uh, you know, 
of whichever background. Um, so kind of just wanted to say that. Yeah, I think it's so insightful to point out that our own internal bias is playing a part in our fears. Um, and uh, just, uh, I remember it's very intimidating entering a room uh, full of men. Um, but as what your mentor said, you just need to take that out of your system, right? Uh, that doesn't matter. You know, what you say uh, uh, matters more than how you look. So we just really need to take that out of our system as well. Yeah, so I, I agree that uh, role model is great uh, and important. Uh, role model is very important for every stage of uh, the career path. Um, and, uh, you know, from the entry level to the senior level. Um, as you said, um, we don't need to find a perfect person as the role model. We can learn something from uh, most leaders around us. Um, so definitely um, try to understand uh, ourselves, uh, um, given our own personality traits, what's the most effective style for ourselves. And uh, I think as a minority group, we are um, trailblazers in one way or another. So uh, we don't have to do it alone. Uh, so in this internet age, we can definitely leverage um, online support groups and communities um, to help us uh, in that uh, leadership journey. Yeah, the, the perfect examples are SANA, right? The South Asian uh, Network of Actuaries and Abacus Actuaries. Um, they are both uh, great supporting groups um, uh, for everyone who share the same cultural um, background. I know Abacus Actuaries um, has a great mentor program. So uh, last year, 2022, I joined their mentor program. Uh, as a mentor, and uh, it was such a great experience. Uh, it's a learning experience for, for both the mentor and the mentee, so highly encourage that uh, uh, to everybody. So I know they are running a 2023 mentor program as well, so um, feel free to sign up if you're looking for someone to connect. Yeah, yeah, and I want to say the same for Sana. If you're looking for mentors or just somebody to talk to, feel free to reach out to us, uh, and uh, you know we'll be happy to help you connect with someone that you can talk to, share our concerns if you need guidance, if you need help with anything. Um, you know, Sana uh, is a great place for uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much, Zrong, for uh, sharing your perspective, your journey. Um, really appreciate it. And thank you so much for, you know, I had a great time. Thank you so much for your time. Um, it was a great discussion and something that needs to be talked about. So, uh, you know, it was great that was, I'm really happy that we could have this talk and discussion. So I just also want to thank SOA, uh, Sana and Abacus uh, for giving both of us this opportunity uh, so that we could share our journey uh, and, you know, uh, share our personal journey, uh, what we went through and kind of lessons we learned so uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you, Zerong, again. Uh, and thank you, everyone, who for listening. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, it's been a, a great conversation. Uh, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.